So how does self-loathing affect weight loss? Hey folks, my name is Allie. Let's get started. So I actually came to the realization that it is going to be my five year keto anniversary on the 13th of February. So that means I haven't had a freaking fruit in over five years <laughs> or bread or pasta or potatoes. You know, I cut out all the junk as I do on keto, but today's video isn't really about keto. Um, it's really just about weight loss in general. And I'm just kind of going off of my own experiences and what I learned and what I remembered. Now, why should you listen to me? Well, I lost 170 pounds following a ketogenic or very, very low carb lifestyle in about two years. And I've been keeping it off for, geez, I guess almost three years now. So I think I know a little bit about weight loss. And if you struggle with weight, I hope that this video helps you. I was literally in the shower having this shower thought. And since it's almost my keto anniversary, I was trying to remember, you know, what it was like when I was overweight, not just what I looked like, but those emotions, the way that I was feeling my thoughts about life and about my health and how I looked. And I was just trying to understand the person that I was. And then I was thinking, well, why do I think keto worked so well at that point in my life when I had tried so many other different diets and none of them actually ever worked. <laughs> and I think that's because they weren't sustainable for me um, throughout my life. But I also think I wasn't at a place mentally to actually lose the weight. So I think a lot of people believe that weight loss is just about eating right and exercising more when that's half of it. It really is just half of it. And the other half is coming to a mental state where you're ready to make a change. And that's why I talk more than just about, you know, eating low carb and low carb recipes. I really try and tackle that other mental side of it. You know, all those head issues that we got going on, all of that baggage that we attach to our food addictions. And I really do try and help other people overcome that mental block when it comes to food and using food to soothe their souls in a way. And honestly, it's a little bit harder to teach about that because it's not just a list of rules. It's really, you have to understand yourself as a person and I can't do that for you. Nobody else can do that for you. You just have to know what you can handle in life and you have to know how to fulfill your spiritual needs in other ways besides food. So I tried so many diets throughout my life until I found keto and none of them worked, like I said, because they weren't sustainable. Um, you know, I just, I didn't enjoy them as much as I enjoy keto. And so I didn't keep up with them. I'm sure I would have lost weight on those diets if I had stuck with them, but I just could not. But I think also too, I always was in a place of self-loathing when I was younger and trying to lose weight before I found keto. So today we're talking about self-loathing and self-loving. A little bit of a different topic, but I think it's really important to talk about. So that's what we're going to talk about today. <laughs> I remember being an overweight, you know, kid, teenager, young adult, and I just hated myself the way that I looked and the way that I felt. And I tried these kind of crash diets or these popular diets or just maybe even not eating like fasting for several days at a time because I hated who I was. And honestly, I think the reason keto worked was because I was so excited about it. I was finally in a state of mind to trust myself to give it a real try because keto seemed so sustainable and it seemed like a real diet that I could actually follow for the long term. And so my headspace was in different places with all my other diets and with keto. I had a lot of self-loathing. I hated who I was. It was almost like I was punishing myself by going on those crash diets by not eating. I remember in middle school, you know, I hated the way that I looked. And so I started just taking a tiny baggie with one serving of Doritos and a diet soda. And that was my lunch. And that's not healthy, right? That's, that's not good. But then the bus driver said, Oh, you look like you're losing weight. And I was too ashamed to tell her, yeah, it's cause I'm just eating, you know, 120 calories for lunch. And I don't know. It's just, yeah, it came out of self-loathing and I was hurting myself. I was doing that because I just hated who I was. I just wanted to be a different person, basically. So even though, yeah, when I started keto and I started living a sustainable, healthier lifestyle, I was trying to become a different person, but it came out of excitement. It came out of a state of just being committed to myself for once and trusting myself to take the plunge and try something totally different. Um, and to try and better my life. 
It came out of excitement. And that's what I think is so crucial for any weight loss diet that you choose to follow. It's, um, it's definitely a big stage in losing weight. I have a whole video talking about the stages of a weight loss diet. And I think that that's pretty universal for all types of diets, not just keto. I really try and, you know, appeal to the masses <laughs> with my videos. But definitely at some point, you really do need to be excited about weight loss and you need to have that desire for it to happen and that motivation. So sustainability and motivation are such big keys. And I think that the sustainability comes in with the actual food or the weight loss program that you're actually following, the workout program you're following. That's the sustainability, but that motivation, that's the spiritual part that comes from in here. Um, that's where you really have to convince yourself to try and to trust yourself and to give it all you got. And I think a lot of people that don't struggle with their weight or have never really struggled with it, you know, to the point where they have health issues and they need to lose weight direly, I think that they don't understand the mental part. I mean, a lot of people who ever eat are food addicts. You know, we, we eat that food, we crave it because it's comforting in times of need or in times of excitement. I mean, it's just, we have an emotional attachment to food. And so having that self-loathing having that I'm going to punish myself by not enjoying something, by not eating. It's just, it's one of the worst feelings, really. I mean, you really do hate yourself in that moment. So I do not think that anybody should really start a weight loss program from that self-loathing point because you don't want to be at that point, right? If you feel like you have to punish yourself by losing weight and doing something that you don't like because you're ashamed of yourself, because you hate yourself, that's not going to set you up for sustainability and motivation later on. So again, you really do need to come to that point where you're excited to better yourself, excited to try something new and to make the changes that you want to see in your life. So that's just my thoughts, you know, trying to look back at why keto worked for me when I started it five years ago. But a good tip if you do start any type of weight loss program is to always have that day that you started. So I always look back at February 13th, five years ago, and I say, man, that first meal of a bunless burger, that set me up for success. And I remember the next day and, you know, I just, I think that's a great tip is when you commit to something, just always have that day that you can look back on when you realize that you changed your life for the better. I think that definitely helps with motivation as well. I've been going through a lot of changes recently um, and just trying to live the best version of myself, live my best life, I guess is what you could say. <laughs> Apparently that's the thing that people are saying these days. Yes, queen. <laughs> I do feel like a queen sometimes. You gotta feel like a queen or a king, whatever. Anyway, so I think a lot of positive change has to come from just being excited to move on, to change, to better yourself. And that cannot come from self-loathing. You can't do it. It ain't possible, I don't think. But do let me know. What do you think? I definitely think that I personally had to be at a low point in life. But when it came to actually changing my diet, that came from excitement. So um, it just depends. But I never really looked at keto as a way to punish myself for the way that I was. I never looked at it through a self-loathing lens. And if you are starting your weight loss journey, please, yes, try and be very positive about it. Try and feel that excitement because that's motivational and that's a key to weight loss in my opinion. But what do you think? Do you feel like you need to hit that point where you just hate yourself and everything about yourself and that's gonna help you change? Or you know what? I really wanna do this and I wanna be really positive about it and I'm really excited about it. Like which side do you fall on? What happened to you? Well folks, that's about it for today. I hope that you enjoyed the video. And if you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. That would help me out so much. And if you'd like to follow me on social media, I will link all of that down below. My Instagram is poppin'. It's, it ain't poppin', but we have fun. I have fun. I like Instagram. It's all the pictures, whatever. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. My name's Allie. Have a good one. Bye.